Hello again guys, uh, so now that we've got everything set up, as you can see, we're going to have a little game. Let's play. Uh, so, um, I'm going to play the game in solo mode. So, let me just explain quickly the different ways that you can play. Um, so, here we're going to do game mode 1. So that's the game mode where you complete missions and try and get as many points as you can to win the house cup. Um, and you can do it in underage wizard mode, which is the beginner mode, or you can do it in qualified wizard mode, which is the more advanced mode. We're going to start with underage wizard mode, which um, is actually when the wizards are between the age of 11 and 17, because then after that they know how to do transfiguration um, and they become qualified. So we're going to assume that I don't know how to do that yet. Um, so if we're doing this game mode, we can play a quick game where we need to do one mission and get at least 210 points. The classic game is two missions and 260 points, and that's the one we're going to do. Or you can do a long game and go for three missions and 320 points. Um, there are a few differences between underage and qualified wizard mode, but um, I'll explain that to you later. We're just going to get stuck straight into it. And the second game mode, Voldemort, Re Voldemort Returns, uh, we'll look at that some other time too. So um, here as you can see the board is set up, so I've put all of the 30 object tokens on the squares which have rosettes on them, um, completely, completely at random, um, and I've taken my character, I'm going to be Harry Potter today, and I'm going to put him on the start square over here at the entrance to Hogwarts, next to the pointy hands which go Diagon Alley in one way and Hogwarts Castle the other way. And I've taken my player file um, and all of the characters start the game with a number of life points. So um, these are what keep you in the game. Um, you start with a number here, the ones that are dark, that's how many you start with. It's different for each character and the faded ones, well you can collect extra. So as I go around maybe I'll have more life points than I started with or less. And, but I hope to improve as the game goes on. That's kind of the point. Um, you put your object tokens over here. Once that box is full, you can't collect any more objects. So um, you're not allowed to collect all of the objects. You do have a limit. Up here at the top, we have a resistance to attacks number and a number of attack dice number. And that's for when we do the combats. Each character gets a number of dice to do their attacks. And it's different for each one and a resistance that's, uh, well, I'll explain how those work afterwards, but basically, if I have a resistance level of four, that means that someone attacking me needs to get a four or above in order to do any damage to me. Um, and then each character has two special abilities, like superpowers or talents or whatever. One is to do with how you move on the board. So Harry Potter, um, when he lands on a spell square, so that's a square with a magical wand on it, he gets to draw two spells instead of one. That's a pretty cool power. Some of the characters, they can like move extra spaces or they can pick extra books or things like that. And then the second special ability is gonna to be to do with combat. So it's something that's gonna give you an advantage during a, during a fight. And Harry Potter is able to lower his opponent's resistance to make them less resistant to his attacks. Um, so I'm gonna set Harry Potter up here. Also, all of the characters start with one flu powder token and one port key token. And remember, these are the tokens, precious tokens, that allow you to travel to board three, to Gringotts Bank or Grimmauld Place or the Forest of Dean and collect objects or do your missions. Or we'll see that in a moment. So I'm going to put my tokens there. I'm going to put my life points on here. Do I have enough? I'm missing one. Uh, and we're gonna, oh no, I can't get started yet because each character also starts with a set number of spell, potion, and book cards. Harry starts with four spells, uh, so I'm gonna take those now. One, two, three, four, two potions, and two books. Uh, these are, well, the spells and potions are going to help us with the combats, and the books are going to help us win extra points. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
and because we are playing uh, solo and I'm going to take five mission cards so I'm going to be able to choose which missions I try and do. If there's a lot of you playing, like uh, six people or more, then you would just take three mission cards because there are 30 missions in total and if you do the math past a certain number of players, that's, there's not enough missions to go around. One, two, three, four, five. Um, and I'm going to take a quick moment to have a look at these missions with you. So we've got Find the Philosopher's Stone, that's worth 60 points. Remember, in this game mode we need 260 points and we need to complete two missions. So for that I need this object here. Um, get hold of the golden egg, I like that one. Um, that's where you fight against the dragon. Um, I wonder if I could do that one. Oh, actually yes, because the egg is right there. Uh, the broomstick's over there. I think I'm going to have a go at that one. Um, retrieve the prophecy. Ooh, that looks like a that looks like a hard one. Um, right there. Uh, what else do we have? Steal Helga Hufflepuff's cup and defeat Lord Voldemort. Okay, well, um, I'm not sure which one I'm going to do next, but I'm going to start with this mission. Um, so, to get the golden egg, I need to collect the objects on the board. In qualified wizard mode, or in team mode, I also need to collect um, some of the, some specific spells. So for this mission, I would need to find the Asio spell and two attack spells as well. But we're just going to keep it simple and go get the objects. Um, so to move on the board, um, I take two dice and I roll them, quite simple. Um, so uh, the first thing I'm going to do is decide which direction to go in because we have the pointy hands here and I can either go to Diagon Alley or I can go into Hogwarts Castle. Um, and I would like to get the broomstick over there and as I've rolled a seven, I think that might be possible. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That takes me exactly where I wanted to go. Um, Ta-da! So I get to collect the broomstick. Um, now, normally my, my turn ends there. I just collect the broomstick. I've rolled seven, I've moved seven squares, so that's, that's the end of my turn. Um, if you're playing with someone else, then it would now be their turn to roll the dice. But as I'm playing alone, just me and you, um, I get to keep rolling. Um, obviously, if you're playing solo mode, it's uh, easier to get the objects that you want to get. But if uh, by any chance you lose all of your life points, then you completely lose the game. Like in the other game modes, if you lose all your life points, then you go back to the Leaky, Leaky Cauldron, which is on Diagon Alley, and you have to throw away all of your spell and potion and book cards, which is a real pain because these really do help you to win the missions. Um, so, uh, I mean, it's a pain in the other game modes, but basically if I lose my life points in this game mode, I'm dead. So I don't want to do that. Uh, let's roll again. Uh, seven again. Okay, so I guess I'm going to come back. Um, one, two, three, four, five. Uh, maybe I'll stop here actually, because um, See, you can stop, you can choose to stop on squares where there is writing, so that's like all the special locations like the Room of Requirement, the, the West Wing, the, the Castle Towers that have writing on, and also the Castle Towers that don't have writing on because you can stop on Castle Towers to travel to Board 3. Um, and you can also stop on squares that have life points to collect. So I can stop here and collect two extra life points and then I'd end my turn. So I'm going to do that this time because uh, as I just told you that if I run out of life points I die, I think um, it could be a good idea. So two extra life points for me, end of my turn. Okay, now I want to go and get that egg. Seven, eight, okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And that looks like an action square. So, if I land on an action square at the end of my turn, I draw an action card. It could be good or it could be bad. Nymphadora Tonks. She offers you a gift for the plants you gave to Professor Sprout. Sounding good. Win 25 house points. Yay! Okay, cool. So, I didn't win any missions yet, but I, I got some points. Um, Oh, um, 
Ah, I just forgot one thing. Um, I moved over this square here, and so I collect that object. You mustn't forget to collect the objects because they're really important for your missions. So I'm going to put that one there along with the broomstick, and I'm still on my way to the egg. And I just got 25 house points, so that's pretty cool. Uh, time to roll again. Okay, four. One, two, three, four. So I've got the egg now, uh, and I get to draw an event card. That's the one with a sorting hat on it. Or, I don't know if this, it's the sorting hat or a wizard's hat. I like to think it's the sorting hat. Um, play a Quidditch match. Now actually, this so the event cards, they affect all characters. And in this case, um, we would all go and play a tournament with the Quidditch pitch over here. But because I'm playing solo, I'm just going to ignore that card because um, I can't play Quidditch on my own. Up. And we're going to roll again. Uh, so I've got my two objects now, so let me just check. Um, I need to go to the Dragon's Arena in order to do this mission. And that is over here, so that's where I want to get to next. Uh, I'm just going to check something because um, yeah, maybe I can stop on the way at the Defense Against the Dark Arts class because I actually have some book cards for that class, so uh, maybe I'm going to stop there on the way. Six, seven, eight, one, two, three, four. Um, well, I'm not in a rush because I'm playing alone, so I'm going to uh, now trade these cards in for the number of points that's indicated, and that's 20 points here. And five points here, that's for the Dark Forces, A Guide to Self-Protection textbook and the exam that goes with it. And The Getting with Ghouls by Gilderoy Lockhart. Very nice. So 25 points, you said that was. Here are, here are the points. 25. Oh, I'm almost running out of space for my points. I'm going to have to take bigger point tokens. How awful. Uh, okay, next go. Eight, one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, we're there. Uh, so we're going to stop in the Dragon's Arena and we're now going to do the mission. So, this is mission number 11. So I need to take combat card number 11. Pretty straightforward. Let me try and find it here. There we go. I'm going to be fighting, ladies and gentlemen, against the Hungarian Horntail. Now, the Hungarian Horntail has a resistance to attacks of five, but if you remember, Harry Potter has a special ability which lowers the resistance of his opponent by one point, so the Hungarian Horntail is only going to have a resistance of four, and he has ten life points. That's quite a lot of life points. It's actually more than me. I've only got nine, but I have my spells and potion cards, and we're playing in underage wizard mode, so I can use up to five of those per combat, so I'm hoping I'm going to be able to, you know, get in all the same. Um, now, we just need to read this here, which tells us how he is going to affect us. So, as soon as the Hungarian Horntail is revealed, you lose four life points, <laughs> then two life points after each attack. He is immune to potions. Oh, darn it. Okay, so I can't use a potion against him. Um, and I have to get rid of four life points, which means I only have five. Um, and I can't use my potions, but I, I can use my spells. So, now it's my turn, and uh, I have to choose whether I attack him with my dice or with the cards. Um, and I have four attack dice, so that's four chances to make him lose one LP. Um, and some, well, quite often the spells are going to help you make them lose more LP than you can make them lose with your dice. So we're going to see what we can do. Uh -huh. Oh, I've got some really nice spells here. Uh, attack, 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 defense, attack. Well, I can't use the potions. I have one defense spell and three attack spells. Um, so basically, when you're doing a combat, you can either 
play a defense spell or potion and then do a dice attack, or play a defense spell or potion and then do a card attack, or you can just do a card attack or just do a dice attack. And I think I'm going to play a defense card and an attack card. So I'm going to play the defense card Rictu Sempra, which is going to make the dragon laugh. And I like that idea of the dragon laughing. Um, and that means he can't use his special ability for one turn. So that means he's not going to affect me after, after I've attacked him for this round. Um, and then I'm going to use this attack spell, which is an un unforgivable curse, so it's a really nasty one. Um, and it enables me to take total control over the dragon, and he's going to lose 7 LP at once. Bam! So, uh, he did have 10 LP. Let me get them. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And I'm going to take away 7. So he's just down to 3 LP now. And he doesn't affect me this time because of my defense spell. So I get to attack him again, and I think this time I'm going to have a go with a dice attack. So I take my four dice, I roll them, uh, and remember I need to get a result of four or above, because I've reduced his re resistance to four, to make him lose one LP. And I've got two sixes, a three and a one, so he's going to lose two LP, he only has one left, but now he can use his power again, so he's going to make me lose two LP. So I'm down to three, um, and I'm going to roll my dice again, and there, well, he's dead, because I've got way more than one four there. So I have completed the mission, and yay! Goodbye, Hauntail. Um, and that wish earns me a whopping 150 points. Okay, I'm going to take those points now. 150. So let's do a quick count up. Uh, I am now up to... 150, 67 to 80, 90, 200 points. Um, so if I am playing a quick game, I, I just need 10 more points to win. If I'm playing a classic game, I need to complete another mission and I need to get 260 points. So um, I'm not, not too far off winning actually. And I, now that I've completed one mission, I'm gonna have a look um, at what other missions I have to do here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, haha! Here we actually have a mission where I already have the object. So I think we're just going to go straight and try and do that mission. So that's retrieve the prophecy. And to do that mission, I need to go to the Hall of Prophecy, which is on the board three over here. So I'm going to need to use a flu powder token to get there. Uh, and I'm going to need to stop on a castle tower. Those are used. Then over here, the used cards. Up. Okay. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. And I'm going to use a flu powder and go straight there. Uh, Hall of Prophecy, here it is. All right, uh, so let's take the mission card for the Hall of Prophecy, Lord Voldemort, number 19. Mission 19. Take the combat card, three Death Eaters, 12 life points, oh dear, um, and a, resist a resistance to attacks of four. Do you know what? Um, I, forgot, I forgot to check my number of life points before I went straight headlong into doing this next mission, and I'm a little bit worried now. Um, I hope I've got some good potions here. Let's, um, let's see what it says. So, before each of the players attacks, the Death Eater makes you lose 3 LP until they are eliminated. Oh dear. Um, I actually... So, I had 200 points, I completed one mission, but 
I only have three LP left and I've just lost them, so I've actually just lost the game. This is a very sad and embarrassing moment. Um, do you know what? Um, I think I'm going to play again. Uh, and this time I'm going to play in Qualified Wizard mode. Uh, so maybe uh, I'm not going to make a whole other video about Qualified, video, uh, Qualified Wizard mode right now. But just to let you know what the differences are. Um, first of all, if you're playing Qualified Wizard mode, so it's like this, you set all the objects up on the rosettes randomly. But in addition, you take the Death Eater tokens and you put them on the Castle Towers. So the Castle Towers, there's 18 of them, it's all of the round ones. Remember I stopped on one here to go over to the Hall of Prophecy just now to complete my second mission. Um, and when, when you um, cross the Death Eaters, so that not when you land on that square, but when you go past a square which has a Death Eater, right, you'll have to stop and fight them. Um, and you have, uh, you have player files for the Death Eaters here. Um, a bit like the player files, except for they don't, maybe they don't have exactly the same, I think they don't have all of the same things, hang on, ah, yeah, there we go. Yeah, they, it's basically the same player file, but uh, Death Eater's not collecting objects and stuff, so it looks a little bit different. Um, so you'll collect um, a Death Eater file and do the fight against the Death Eater. Um, also, if you're playing um, with other players and you cross another player during your move, um, so you, you don't end your move there, but you do have to stop and pause and do a duel with them. Um, duels is quite straightforward in Underage Wizard mode, you just both roll the dice and whoever gets the highest number makes the other use, lose an LP. The first to lose two LPs loses the duel and then they get to steal a port key or a flu powder or an object or a face down card. And in Qualified Wizard mode, you actually get to use um, your attack dice and your potion and spell cards, but just one of each when you're against players, and you have to reduce them down to one LP. You can't uh, reduce them to no LP because then you'd, you'd have to get rid of all your cards and you'd literally never complete any missions. Um, so when you're playing with other players and you cross them, you have to stop and do duels. When you cross um, a Death Eater, you have to fight them. And when you do mission combats, you only get three to use a maximum of three cards, potions or spells. So it's a lot harder, because obviously the spells are going to help you win a lot quicker, so you're going to need to prepare better for your missions, get more life points, get better spells, and just spend a little bit more time discovering things on the board. Um, uh, any other differences? Yeah, in, if, you're, if you're playing in team mode, whether it's Underage Wizard, or qualified wizard mode, the basic difference is, apart from that you're going to help each other get the objects, um, once you've got the objects, what, you all try and get to that square. So say I'm playing with Hermione and I, when we're doing the mission in the Hall of Prophecy, well, I go there and then I wait for Hermione to get there, I stop my turn, and I don't take uh, any more turns until Hermione has uh, joined me. Um, when, you com when you're completing missions, um, I think I mentioned it earlier, but in Qualified Wizard mode, you need to also collect extra spells and extra potions, and sometimes specific spells and specific potions. So again, that takes a bit longer, but in team mode, it can be a bit quicker because there's more of you collecting those spells and tokens. Um, and in team mode, also, when you go against the dragon, so uh, here, well, here it was the, no, that was the dragon. You go against the Death Eaters, for example, so they have 12 points. But if there's two of us on the team, then they'll have 24 life, life points. So you, you um, multiply the number of life points by the number of people on your team. And then you take it in turns to attack, and you take it in turns to be affected by the special ability of your enemy. Um, so I'm going to have a go playing solo in Qualified Wizard mode. Um, obviously, if you're playing with other players, you can also have a game of Quidditch within the game, and that's actually required in Qualified Wizard mode in order to win the game. You have to have done a Quidditch match, otherwise you can't win the game, even if you've collected all the objects, all the spells, and defeated your mission enemies, you still have to be able to be, uh, you know, it's important. Quidditch is, you know, it's a question of 
honour, you, you, know, you have to play a game of Quidditch. Um, and I'll show you how to play Quidditch in another video. But for now I'm going to leave you, uh, because uh, I, I feel like an idiot and um, I want to be alone so that I can beat the game uh, in Qualified Wizard mode without you watching me. Thanks and uh, see you soon.